On this blue collar coder short take, we are going to fix efficiency issues with using use state and use context in React. This is another cool library from Daishi Kato. They continue to go and do some awesome work in the React state space. So let's go take a look at, well, first, what the problem is. Let's bring up the editor and Chrome, and I'll show you what we're looking at. So side by side, we've got a text field that relates to this text value. This is basically just a copy of that. Uh, and then there's a random number down here, and this random number changes any time this is re-rendered, right? So if I go over here and I change something, you can see that that random number changes. But if you're looking really closely, this is at 0 0.81. If I am add a character here, then this gets re-rendered as well, which is not great. It's not what you want. In fact, let me just demonstrate the issue a little bit more clearly. If I bring up the inspector and then bring up paint inside there, do command shift P to bring up this menu and then just type in paint, I see show paint flashing rectangles. Let's turn that on. And now anytime I make a change, you can see graphically that this text over here is changing even when its value isn't changing. Now, obviously this is a small example, but when you think about state at scale and using use context to move state around the tree, right? you wanna make sure that you're still in a world where I'm not gonna get re-rendered unless the data that I am rendering has changed, right? So that is one of the efficiency problems with use state and use context. And that's one of the reasons why we've been using tools like Redux, MobX, Valshio, Jotai, Zustand. All of those are meant to solve this problem. But what Daishi has done is create a new library called React Track, which allows you to go and take use state and use context code, which is baked right into the React, the support for that, and then just add a little bit of code on this, using this React track to make sure that you only get updated when things actually change. Actually, I'm gonna go enable that right now and we can go take a look and see. So I'm gonna go over into the store and I've got the React tracked code comment it out, I'm gonna uncomment that, and then comment out the naive context code, and then save that. Now we can go back into here, and we can see as I type, nothing changes over here. So that's exactly what we want in terms of use context efficiency, so that when we make a change to one value, only the code that only the components that are going to render that value change. All right, so let's go and start this example from scratch so you can see exactly how we do this. I'm going to create a new Create React app called Test. Okay, and I'm going to CD in there and then bring up Visual Studio Code. Now we've already got it running in another window, so I'm gonna go stop that. And just because I wanna do everything this year as much as I can in TypeScript, I'm gonna go and add TypeScript support in. The dash D on the end there means to go and bring that into the dev dependencies. And I'll go and change the file names from app.js to app.tsx and index.js to index.tsx. You know, I could go and just do ts, but here's what's gonna happen in that case. Because I've got JSX in here, it's gonna give me some issues. So what I really need to do is always, if I've got JSX code in my implementation file, it needs to be .tsx. So change that back to tsx. Now let's pare this down a little bit. And I'm gonna fix up the styling. 
That's all we really need. And I'll maybe get a little bit bigger. And then finally for the inputs, I'm gonna make them large as well. This is really just so that we can see it easier. All right, let's get this started. Okay, uh, pretty decent starting point there. So let's go over and go to the React Tract page. So now we've done this Create React app. I'm kind of going to play along with Daishi's documentation here. Daishi's documentation is fantastic. I am just all I'm going to do is just change the state really and walk us through this. So I'm going to grab the TypeScript example here. So you can do JavaScript or you can do TypeScript, but I'm going to do TypeScript because I think again I want to do mostly TypeScript this year. So I'm going to copy that out and I'm going to create a new file called store.tsx that has that content. And let's just go take a look at this. So I'm going to change, this is the initial state. I'm going to change this to text one. And text two. And then he defines a function called use my state. That function in turn calls use state, which is the react use state with that initial state. And then he defines my context, which is a created context. And the type is either the return type of this use my state, or it's null. And he starts off at null. And that's because you can't run use state, which is a hook outside of the context of a React component, which is down here in this shared state provider. So let's actually look at that then. The shared state provider is a React functional component. Take some children. It you then uses that myContext.provider and gives it the value of the result of use my state. So now use my state is run. That's that hook. And then that return type is then now lo loaded into that create context. So now that's going to have that text one and text two and have that initial state. And then to use that, We've got a custom hook here called use shared state. It calls use context with my context to go get the context. And then if the value is null, that means that we haven't added a shared state provider to our React tree. So he's going to give you a nice little error there if you haven't done that. Nice informative error in your console to tell you, hey, man, you got to go and add shared state provider in there. Otherwise, we return value, which is going to be state and state set. That's what that's going to be. Because that's what's coming out of this right here. Okay. So let's go bring in our store first. And now let's wrap the app in that shared state provider. And then I'm going to create two components, an input and a display. So I'm going to create the input for text one. It's going to be input one. And it's going to use that shared state. through that custom hook that we created. And I gotta say, this is actually, if you're gonna use use state and use context, this is actually a really clean paradigm for that. All of the declaration of what the state is, the creation of the provider as a component, and the creation of a, a use hook system is all packaged in one spot. So this is a really nice clean pattern for how to use use state and use context really cleanly. 
that you can use, even if you don't use this React track library. So this is a nice piece of work. This is actually better than what I've been showing off in terms of how to use context. So if you're gonna use context, this is a great way to go. Let's go back into here. I'm gonna return an input. The value of that input is gonna be text one. And then we're gonna create an on change that takes an event and then sets the state with that new value. So we take the initial state and then we just override text one. And then the next thing we need to do is create a display for that. So we're gonna create another component called text one that shows it off. Now we're not gonna do any settings, so let's get rid of that. And all we're gonna do is just put a div in there with that value. Okay, so now I'm gonna go and add those into our app. And let's go take a look in the browser. All right, looking pretty good. So another thing we wanna do is make sure that we know when this text component is repainting. So I'm gonna go and add in a math random in there. All right, looking pretty good. So as you can see, we're not passing any state to these guys through props. This is all use context. Now we can move this out into a different file, but honestly, it wouldn't make much of a difference. Let me go and copy these and then create the text two versions of those. All right, now we've got these in two different columns. And we've got input one, text one, input two, text two. Let's save that out again. And now, so you've got these side by side. And as I change this, we can see that we have that issue where the state is updating and anything that relies on that state, regardless of if what they're looking at changes, we are getting an update. So that's that's not ideal. At scale, that's gonna be a performance problem. Obviously, it's not really a performance problem at the moment. It's the world's tiniest React app. But the reason it's tiny is because Daishi and I want to be able to show you exactly what the problem is. So let's go and take a look at Daishi's fix. Back over on his page. If we scroll all the way down here, he mentions in particular the performance issue with Pure React. So our app works totally fine, but if it's shared state becomes very big, we may experience a drop in performance. And this is because all components that use the shared state will re-render even if only a small part of the shared state is changed. And that's exactly what we're seeing. Okay, so let's go and add this React tracked library into our app. and then restart. And it's the same thing. There's no magic here. We're not magically invoking this thing. So let's go and now apply that fix. So we'll go down here, we'll bring in create container from React Tract and put that into our store. And then we'll go down below the use my state and export this code. So we'll walk through that really slowly. So I'll bring that down here and we'll get rid of all of this. So what's happening here? So 
Create container is expecting that you give it this function, and that function does this use state. Right? That's that. This is the contract for create container, and what it returns to you, which which you then export, is a provider and use tract. And what Daichi is doing here is he's remapping provider to shared state provider because that's what we're expecting in the app. And you can name that whatever you want. And he's also exporting use tract as use shared state, which is, again, what we're exporting as our custom hook from the original naive implementation. So let's save this out. As you can see, a couple of things are now unused, which is fine. We can keep that around. And now when I take a change here, nothing changes over there. So it's tracked, which is tracking what text two is looking at. When this component is only looking at text two, right, then React Tract is smart enough to say, okay, it doesn't need an updating. And let's actually give that a test. Let's see now if we take this text two component and go and bring in also the text one data, is Tract smart enough to figure out that that's the case? Let's go find out. So let's take text two and just add on to it. So we're gonna go and add in uh, text one up there as well. Save that out. So now this side is showing both text two and text one. And as I change it, yep. So it's automatically detecting that this component now has a dependency on text one as well. So that's really, really cool. But now, Let's roll back, back this example. I've been asked a couple of times by people, it's like, why do you use use context if your implementation is in the same file as the components? So that's interesting to think about. Let's see if just using use state without using use context at all is a performance problem. We'll use prop drilling. So why do you use use context? Well, you don't wanna drill props. So, you know, down multiple levels. You want to be able to have a component in any location in your tree use state that's also managed in another part of the tree. But let's say you, you don't have that problem. It's not a deep tree. So you want to be able to, like this, you want to be able to use use state. Well, so let's, let's try that out. Let's see. Now let's get, let's basically back off the store and turn these into just simple stateful components or, or state-based components. So the first thing I need to do is create some state. And then I'm gonna pass that into, well, first the text. Now, as you can see, these are really just the same component now. So let me get, just go down to just text. And save that out. Now I gotta bring in React as well. So now these two things are going to be disconnected, and also we have a TypeScript problem, so let's go fix the TypeScript problem. Value is a string. So now we're not going to see any changes because these two are looking at the state. So let's go fix input as well so that everything's talking together. So what does input need to take? Well, it needs to take the value, and it needs to have an on change. And that value would be a string. And that on change would be a function that is given the text. And 
returns a void. We no longer need that shared state. This is value. This goes to on change. And we'll call that input. And get rid of this input over down here. And so the value in this case is going to be text one. And that on change is going to take text, a value of text, well, text one in this case. There you go. Now let's just flip this one to text two. And the last thing we need to do is remove the provider. Okay, so this is a very naive state-based implementation. Let's see if we have that same performance problem. And well, that's not quite right. So let's go and fix any bug that I've got. Ah, uh, yeah, okay, so that's text two. All right. So now we have the same performance problem that we did before because we're not actually tracking that text only looks at state.text1 and only needs to update when text1 changes. And this version of text only updates on text2. So what Daishi has done by giving us React Tract is not just a way to elegantly use use state and use context more efficiently, but also a better solution to use use context and use state even when you could do that prop drilling because at the end of the day, it's going to be more efficient by doing React Tract. So great stuff. And let's also go over to Bundle Phobia really quickly and look to see how big React Tract is. How much are we going to pay for this? Well, we're going to pay 5K for tracking efficiently what a component looks at in terms of the stuff coming out of context. All right, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned a lot about use context and use state, how to use them really nicely in a single implementation file, how to use TypeScript to do that, and then how to use this React Tract library to use them even more efficiently. So I hope you enjoy that. And if you have any questions or comments, be sure to put those in the comment section down below. Feel free to like and share this video with your friends. Jump on our Discord channel, which is linked to in the description. Join the conversation. It's a blast. There's also a newsletter link that'll get you access to these kind of videos a day earlier than everyone else. But of course, in the meantime, be happy, be healthy, and be safe.